Crash is one of the most notorious Best Picture winners in history, and is considered one of the greatest upset winners of all time. Everybody and their mother knew that Brokeback Mountain was gonna win Best Picture, but nope, the Academy gave it to Crash. Now, in the Academy's defense, they were caught in a lose-lose situation. Either you're a homophobe if you don't pick Brokeback Mountain, or you're a racist if you don't pick Crash. At the end, the fear of being labeled a racist won the day, and Crash is now in the history books alongside Gone with the Wind, Casablanca, and The Godfather. <laughs> you serious? I have not seen Crash prior to making this video, or Brokeback Mountain, as a matter of fact. This gave me an advantage, as it allowed me to have an unbiased and fresh perspective on the film, without taking into consideration all of the controversy surrounding the win. I even considered giving Brokeback Mountain a watch, but I decided against it at the end. That way I could evaluate Crash independently without any comparisons. Who knows, maybe that way I could discover that Crash is actually an underrated gem, fully deserving of the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> oh. There's no escaping it, folks. Now, after watching Crash, I'm here to report that just on its own, without any comparisons to Brokeback Mountain, without any consideration to the drama that took place during that ceremony, it's a humongous stinking pile of garbage. Apparently, all of the flack this movie got was deserved. This is one of the worst Best Picture winners I've ever seen, if not the worst. I genuinely can't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth, but this actually could be it. This could be the film that finally lifts the Broadway melody off of the bottom of the list. I never expected this to happen, but here we are. Let's just see how bad this shit show really is. Crash was directed by Paul Haggis, who also wrote the previous Best Picture winner, Million Dollar Baby. It stars Sandra Bullock, Don Cheadle, Matt Dillon, Jennifer Esposito, Brandon Fraser, Terrence Howard, Ludacris. Yeah, Ludacris is right. This is a ludicrous amount of A-listers. Too many, as a matter of fact. The film tells multiple stories about multiple characters living in Los Angeles, exploring the, what is by now, tiring theme of race relations in America. And that's pretty much all the movie does. This should have been called Racism the Movie. Every single character in this movie is either a racist or has to deal with racism. And if that sounds dull, repetitive, generic, and yawn-inducing to you, then you're absolutely right. Let's put aside the fact that the film is crap on a technical level. The cinematography? Crap. The editing? Crap. Don't ask me how it won best editing. The music? Crap. The performances? Crap. Let's put aside all of that. The film still has two major issues that absolutely sink it. The first issue is the film's structure. It doesn't tell a single story or follow a main character of any sort. Instead, it tries to be a dramatic and serious version of all of those terrible corporate sellout Gary Marshall holiday flicks. You know the ones. Valentine's Day, New Year's Eve, Mother's Day. Films that follow multiple different characters and tell a bunch of smaller stories and attempt to connect them all with various degrees of success. I hate movies like this. For the life of me, I just can't get into them. Movies like Crash try to offer a profound and meaningful experience by making the smaller stories add up to something greater. But they always fail, because the film is never able to fully explore, flesh out, or develop their characters enough for me to care about any of them. Every time the film tries to give one of the stories some screen time, it has to jump to another one, and then another one, and again and again and again. So in order to make you feel for the character, the script goes Hail Mary on the over-the-top emotional moments. But instead of working, it feels more like a cheap tactic to hit you in the feels. The result is the exact opposite of what the film is trying to do. It feels shallow and meaningless, and the structure of the film is to blame. 
If the film just told one story, it wouldn't have to deal with all of these issues. Not to mention that the structure and the lack of any relatable characters causes the film to be absolutely boring, which is the worst thing a film can be. The second issue the film has is that it over-prioritizes the message it's trying to send. Crash is not the first Best Picture winner to deal with racism, but it is the first one that feels like exploring racism was the entire point and nothing else. It puts the message over story, characters, visuals, and anything related to actually making a good film. Even if I agree with the message, if it's all the film has to offer, then I'm not interested. Nobody wants to see a message fest. Nobody likes to be lectured to. But that's what the film tries to do. It really cemented this film as a giant exercise of wasting everybody's time. Of course, the aspect that is hurt most from this approach is the characters, which feel stock and one-dimensional with a thin and artificial layer of complexity. For example, you've got the stereotypical racist cop, but look, he takes care of his ill father, so you care about him, right? No, I don't. You've got the stereotypical black gangster from the hood, but look, he's not just critical of white people, he's also very critical of his own race, so you care about him, right? No, I don't. There's an interracial couple, there are immigrants, there's an upper-class black married couple, a rich family with a Mexican maid, an Iranian who gets angry at another Mexican. <sighs> it's just race relations, race relations, race relations. And nothing else. Besides the problem that almost none of the characters were even remotely likable, the bigger problem was that the characters didn't feel like characters at all. They felt more like avatars for exploring different facets of racism. Just empty slates with the sole purpose of sending a message to the audience. As a result, I didn't care for any of them. When all a film has is a message, it has nothing. Nothing. This is why Crash is the worst Best Picture winner I've ever seen, in my opinion. The Broadway melody was bad because it was a dated film that didn't stand the test of time, with boring characters and a weak story. But at least the Broadway melody had characters. At least it had a story. It wasn't very good, but it was something. Crash is nothing. It doesn't have a story. It doesn't have characters. It doesn't have any visual interest. All it has is, let's talk about racism for two hours. And that's it. I walked into this movie with zero expectations, neither good nor bad, but what I got surprised even me. I didn't expect the film to offer absolutely nothing, but that's exactly what Crash did. Crash, a very apt title for this wreck of a film. Good riddance to it, I'm done with it, it's over. Crash crashes and burns all the way down to rock bottom. Number last. You know what's the worst thing about this film? As bad as it is, I wasn't seething with hatred while watching it, like with Chicago for example. I literally just felt nothing. It was so bad that I would have preferred if this film enraged me. At least it would have made me feel something. But alas, it was not to be. The film just made me feel dead inside. I'm just glad it's behind me now, and now off to bigger and better things. Please. Up next is the 79th Best Picture winner, the film that finally awarded Martin Scorsese with Best Picture and Best Director wins, The Departed. Took you long enough. Anyway, check back again for the next video of DB Reviews, Oscar Madness Marathon, and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a thing. Thank you all very much, and let the journey continue.